Today we'll be having a closer look at the uh, the Wise PC I picked up a while back. Wise. Uh, one thing I've noticed about it is that it is magic. No, it's uh, got a twelve. 12 megahertz or 8 megahertz switch on the run. Power boost, not power boost. Power boost, not power boost. Oh, that's reset. So that's the uh, the front panel. And uh, got to work out how to get the uh, machine to boot to uh, the BIOS, which I'm not having much luck with. Since I can't get into BIOS because it's possible that it may need to be booted to through a floppy drive. And the floppy drive I need is the five and a quarter inch drive that doesn't work that I don't have. But as you can see here, this is a... Um, the connector on here is uh, similar to the Terra drives and some of the earlier 720k floppy drives I've seen, but it adapts to a standard 34 pin edge connector uh, with Molex. Although there is a separate power connector there, but the, uh, the green lines running down the cable is similar, so that's exciting. So I might have a look, see if any of the other drives are compatible with this caddy. Uh, maybe there's something wrong with this floppy drive. Maybe it needs to be configured as the A drive, because this was the B drive, but I can't boot to it. So, problems everywhere. And, uh, here's the keyboard. As you can see, nothing spectacular, but... Uh, Control and Alter, quite nice looking. You got your numlock caps lock up there. And here's the original uh, CGA EGA card that came out of it. Someone can identify it, that'd be great. Good old Toshiba chip. the rear and it's 8-bit ISA. So that's the uh, keyboard, video card and one of the floppy drives. The floppy drive model Epson SMD 400. Interesting. And there's where the machine's booted to at the moment. One meg memory card. We'll have a look in there in a second. Brother, I have found you at last. Here's an interesting little piece of knowledge. I've just done a Google for AMDEC, A-M-D-E-K, and look at that machine. Very similar, no? It has three bays at the front, side bit, no screen, but uh, the three, three drive bays on the front makes it look like it could quite possibly be a relative of the WISE PC, so I'm having trouble finding anything on the internet about this WISE and how to get into its setup, so proving a bit difficult 
All I've got is nothing but boot failure. Which is not what I want. So the search continues. CPU card overview inbound. Gone ahead and just taken the main CPU card out just so we can have a look. Uh, there is the DRAM. It's a fair bit. And an 87. This camera is pretty bad at focusing up close, so. You're gonna have to bear with me on this one. Two BIOS chips. I will dump them, and uh, we've also got a coprocessor socket there. Love's going out of focus. CPU is under here from memory. Focus, focus, focus. It's an R8026-12 L8120446 hmm, It's one of these types Camera loves to lose focus on the uh, rear of the machine or card, though it technically is most of the machine. Uh, we have a keyboard port, which is uh, very RJ11 looking. And uh, yeah, that's. That's the Y's main card. So it's quite a big card. Uh, what else do we have in there? We've got, uh, there's that 
extended memory. The main board itself is pretty lonely and unpopulated. Got a uh, PC speaker at the front, full length cards, hard drive controller card, biggest power supply you've ever seen. It's really quite a big one. And our space for a three and a quarter, five and a half, and a hard drive. So plenty of expansion room. Let's be honest, with a machine this big, you'd want to have that much expansion room. Keyboard weighs a ton. Just what you'd expect with any of these old machines. Well built and you don't want a keyboard that'll fly off the desk. The Seagate ST251 MLC1. Might as well give the old hard drive a bit of a start up while I've got it all hooked up, just so you can have a listen. Beautiful noises. Get a bit closer. Wonderful, isn't it? If anyone has any ideas on how to get a cranking, I would love to hear. My problem at the moment is that I have no idea how to get into a BIOS-like environment to configure what's connected to the machine. In particular, floppy drives and <coughs> excuse me, hard drives. Because uh, certainly we have drive seek failure, but no boot device available. That's all I get. I've tried connecting the um, the floppy drive up as the main drive to the one of these cables 
A drive or B drive, no success. I believe originally when I got this, the A drive, well, the A drive was the five and a quarter, and the B drive was the three and a quarter. Um, but the five and a quarter is dead. I don't have a five and a quarter to use. And being the A drive, it seems to be all that wants to boot to. It doesn't even, doesn't even care that there's a B drive attached. So I need some way to get into this BIOS. Um, I've made a dump of the, uh, the actual chips, so I'll upload them as well. But uh, yeah, look, if anyone can help me out, that'd be fantastic. I need to do this somehow with a 720K, 3.5 inch floppy drive, and that's about it. Any ideas, leave a comment. Thanks for watching. Hope you can help me. Had to call on a friendly K6450 for this one. Progress, but at what cost? Alright, so I had an idea. I thought, hey, hang on, maybe this giant MFM controller or whatever the hell it is. Uh, this guy. I'll just flap him over here. Octopus looking thing. Tentacles going everywhere. Maybe this is causing the problem. Well, sort of. Indirectly. I had to remove this video card, you might remember me videoing a bit earlier, and install a VGA video card. The catch, my VGA card has a hard drive controller on it, and floppy drive controller. Some strange hybrid oak pumped out um, a while back. And I'd seen similar things on the TerraDrive, uh, when you have two disk controllers installed, when it accesses the floppy drive, they both light up. So if you've got two drives, they're both connected, it'll think both are the A drive and it doesn't know what the heck's going on. So I've gone ahead and used um, the Oak controller card connected to a floppy set as A. Uh, unfortunately these power connectors didn't cut it, so I've connected it up to another computer that has one of these small, smaller Molex connectors. And this PC has a bad PSU fan, be careful. So. Fingers crossed it doesn't catch on fire any second soon. But the good news is, is that uh, it detected that the disc I put in, I don't even know what that disc is, but it was formatted with WinImage. So it tried to boot from it, which is a very good sign. So I'm just going to check if my, oh, my disc is done. Uh, 6.22 DOS boot disc reduced to 720K. You'll notice the tape over the hole there. Uh, control alt delete it is. So, uh, fingers crossed. Invalid configuration, no one cares. Starting MS-DOS. Well, that's pretty good news. So out of the two VGA cards that I have, I brought the wrong one. Although the other one is installed in the PS2, so... Yeah, it wouldn't have done me much good anyway. So now I need to work out how to disable the... Oh, this should be easy. Just work out how to disable the controller on the... the Oak video card and we're there. And hope that doesn't explode. Hmm. I've noticed the older 286s are a bit uh, a bit slow to go ahead and detect that there's no driver, uh, no device there for it to load as well. TerraDrive was extremely slow, it's about the same sort of age. B-A-N-A-N-A-S Caps Lock still responds, just gotta hang tight and remember to delete that out of the config.sys file. Well, isn't that great news though? Ah, progress. Not long and I'll have that uh, MFM drive up and running. We'll be cranking along, singing a song. 
Uh, I don't think it's going to detect anything. I think it's actually frozen. Just uh, caps lock is still working for whatever reason. So uh, I'm going to come back and try and disable this uh, oak card that I could not find any information on last time. I looked, which can't be good, because I'm going to have no idea how to disable the onboard controllers. Stay tuned. Original floppy drive test. It works. As predicted, we are now booting to the original 720K 3.5 inch floppy. And uh, all I had to do was disable the onboard um, hard drive, floppy drive controllers. Unfortunately, I could not find any documentation. Then I realized, oh, I found a little bit. And uh, typically one to two was enable, two to three was disable. So I went ahead and just did all these ones here. They were all set to one and two, which is on that side. So I moved them to that side and it seems to have disabled it because I was attempting to boot to that card uh, with the floppy drive connected. And when it said it wasn't working, there was a floppy drive controller error, I was like, perfect, it is now disabled. So I popped in the giant card and now I've got the floppy attached and we are sitting pretty at a command prompt. Look at that. Now the fun begins. Let's hook in that uh, NFM card and get rid of that PC. Let's focus on this baby. Oh yeah! Didn't quite get this one to work properly, but watch on. Here we are, first boot. We've got the uh, Seagate drive hooked in. And we're hoping for a miracle. Boot to floppy. Somehow read the hard disk. Fingers crossed. Just hoping it works. Phase one complete. We have booted to floppy. Phase two begins. Ah, it's all over. It's all over. I wonder if I've got F disk. Apparently I do, and there's no fixed discs, is that what you're going to say? I knew that's what it was going to say. Oh well, I guess uh, next step is work out how to configure a Seagate drive, which would probably involve some sort of setup program. I do have a couple, G setup's one of them. Uh, I'm going to give that a try. Report back. Now to work out the drive geometry. We're getting closer, much closer. Uh, baby steps, but closer. Um, at the moment, I'm trying to work out the drive geometry for this sucker because uh, it's not in the table, which is a bit difficult, and I can't use Type 47, uh, which is a problem. I have, however, managed to get it to a point where it boots using uh, Type 8, which results in the least data loss. Um, because it's, it has five heads, its cylinders are quite close, and uh, things like that. So at the moment, look at that, did you notice that though? No hard drive fixed disk errors. And I can go to C, and I can DIR, but... Is that because I'm running a new fancy version of DOS? I'm going to have to crack out an older version, see what happens. Um, uh, yeah, we're getting somewhere, given that the C drive is now accessible, which means the C drive works, at least to some degree. And uh, that means if I go back to the A drive, I should be able to jump open F disk and just have a look. Oh, didn't crash. That's good. So there's what I've got. Now obviously I don't want to erase the anything yet. That is a very, very, very last and worst case scenario. But one other thing I did get running is, uh, it's in all my other demos, I might as well uh, show it here. Paku Paku! Actually works pretty well. You can always go up here, the pink one will always be a little bit ahead of you. 
There you go. That's how you play. Yeah. So as you can see, works well. Uh, so the next step is ultimately to to get the hard drive recognized properly. So it's getting quite late and I am hungry and tired, but I'm gonna push on. They often say that most mistakes are made when you're tired and I couldn't agree more. Onward. You can't set geometry without a BIOS. Well, it looks like you know, it gives you that gibberish in DOS and detects the hard drive properly as long as you choose one from the list. So now it's just a matter of getting it to work properly as you can see there. That is not accurate. I'm using drive type 6 at the moment. So just jumping between them. But I'll just give you a quick uh, show of the setup program I'm using. It's just uh, setup.exe and it is pretty much uh, got quite a familiar interface. Pretty much a very old looking version of uh, Phoenix Technologies BIOS. And uh, that's exactly what it does. Uh, this was just, yeah, setup.exe. It does exactly the same as um, as our G setup, so don't get too upset. It's 48 and 49. I thought 47 was the top one. Whoa, I can change these? Why didn't anyone tell me about this? No, not escape. I'm going to set this up. I'll be back. I didn't want to use the full 40 megabytes anyway. Well, I ran out of ideas. Um, so I went with uh, uh, size 8, which loses about... Uh, I don't even know what it loses. It's somewhere around 30 meg instead of being the full 42 meg it is. This is the uh, ST251MLC1. And uh, at the moment we've got FDisk. FDisk has just ran. I've uh, had to use um, DOS 4. Uh, 6.2 was giving me issues. So DOS 4, FDisk, no worries. Found it, delete it, re-add it. And format is now running. And uh, we'll just have to see how we go. I uh, probably should run a program like um, uh, one of those disk checking programs. Check it, maybe? Is that, is that the one that checks hard drives? It's one of them. I've got a massive folder of them on a hard drive somewhere. I don't know where. It's not this one! <laughs> but uh, hopefully we'll be able to boot to this very shortly, uh, which will end the evening and I'll be able to go home. One of the biggest problems I've had with this machine so far, though, that I haven't been able to resolve is getting these brackets on properly. These things are impossible. Maybe I've just got to sit with it and work it out, but... Oh, look, it's got the time on the... And that is not right. It's more like 9.30. So, uh, yeah, that's where we're at. Formatting the drive. That's my camera, all right. Doesn't know how to focus. Anyway, I'll come back uh, once we're booted up to the C drive. Stay tuned. It's here, the final phase. This will be the last video for today. But uh, here we have the Ys. Uh, floppy drive in the front, B drive. Big old Seagate drive, uh, currently formatted as uh, 32 megabytes. That's lost about a quarter of its size, which is a fair bit, but uh, 30 meg is more than enough to get by on. So let's give it a power up. This is it. No floppies. Nothing in there. It's all hard drive. Let's do it spin.
You want me to enter the date? And the time? What's that? I'm at the C prompt. Fantastic. And that's what I call a complete success. We're running DOS 4. And let's just give uh, our good friend Paku Paku a visit. Because it's the only thing I have on this drive apart from format and F disk and command and IO. Yeah. You don't need to worry about that. Go, 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 go. Oh, what? Well, the point is it works. Don't need to worry about how bad I am at uh, Pac-Man. And uh, that is a complete success. So now all that's left is to give the uh, hard drive a bit of a scan, make sure it's working. Try and track down maybe a working five and a quarter floppy drive. Uh, failing that, I might try and uh, retrofit something a bit more modern in there, although it's not technically my machine anymore. Uh, but the fellow who are, uh, I've loaned it to, possibly permanently, will be quite happy that it at least functions. So one meg expansion card, 640 on board, video card and MFM controller card. And uh, as you can see, success! So I'll get it all boxed up and we'll do a, a final overview of it in one piece. But uh, right now it is time to log out for the day. So thanks for watching. Hope this video got on YouTube pretty quickly because it is a long video. It's going to need a fair bit of editing. And I'm probably not going to edit it at all because I'm lazy. I'm just going to join them together. And then you can enjoy the full unedited version. Director's cut, if you will. So once again, thanks for watching and... Uh, Glad we got this puppy up and running. Retrojunkie.net Thanks for watching. Don't forget to leave a comment and I hope you learned something.